Hello and welcome back to Ride Rescue. Uh, as I said in my last video of the convertible top, uh, I'm going to break this into segments. Uh, I'm hoping I can bring it into uh, two, three videos. It looks like it's probably going to be three videos. For the guy that wants to do this project, I want to give as much detail as possible to help them out. So you can skip over if you don't want to really <laughs> see the whole thing and you want to just get the highlights. The plan is with this sheet is to use it as a template. I'm going to mark this bow across the top and then I'll do the same thing around the bottom and then I can use that as a template on the rear window. And hopefully I'll be able to line that all up without using this, this piece on top of that other window, the new window, and making any scratches or anything in it. They can be buffed out, but I'd rather not. So I'll start with taping this along this edge, and then I will flip it over and go around with the magic marker, and then I can trim it. And now I'm able to pull this vinyl window down smooth, Keep it tight against the top edge and just mark where these holes are. It won't be exact just because of the stretch and, and it's cold, but it'll be a, a really good starting point. And I'll trim this all up and lay it on top of the window and see how it looks. Using this as a guide, seeing about a half an inch difference, maybe even less. This has been marked, and that does fall right in line with the uh, paper guide. So, yeah, I'm probably going to end up trimming a little of this off. But, yeah, it's looking really good. So where I need to start now is I need to find the dead center of this bow and the dead center of this back window and then start from there and if all goes as planned that this straight edge will just follow the lead of that bow. And then I'll just have to work along this back end to get the window down and that's really just comes down to trial and error. There's no real easy way to do it. Uh, I'll, I use dimensions off of the original window to find this hole, and I'll just have to start working from there. Once I marked up the template, and now I've set the back window on top of that template, uh, I've got my center line here, I marked my center line there. This is where that critical dimension comes in. So this dimension, on the back window that I pulled out was 24 and a half and that is hitting right on feeling very comfortable that all of this is where it's supposed to be but as the old saying goes measure twice measure three times cut once and if all goes as planned I only have to do it once but I've never had it go to plan <laughs> I've always had to do it at least three times but the nice thing about having to do it multiple times is it's just a matter of making some fine adjustments so that everything pulls tight rather than having to make something major adjustment and then something is messed up. All right, I'm feeling really good about this. I have measured and measured and measured. Uh, I've got all the markings that I need now in order to start putting it on the tack strip. But before I get too far, get carried away and start stapling on the tack strip, you need to put that well liner in first. <laughs> and then by putting the well liner in, that will put a fabric coating across the top of that so that when we start playing with the plastic window, don't scratch it up on this metal. I jumped ahead at this point. Uh, in the prior video, when I did the pads, I also did the back well liner, kind of tie that together. 
So if you, if you want to see all the details of the well liner, it's, it's pretty simple. Just go back to the prior video, the part one of the three part series for the convertible top. Put that well liner now in place. I can start working my way around. Now as I work my way around this back window, the side panels aren't as critical to get really smooth at this point. Um, definitely want to get the final outside top smooth, but this area in the window is probably one of the ones you notice the most. <laughs> if I go to a car show, I usually always end up seeing wrinkles in here. And typically what that is is you have to have this window pulled super tight side to side both at the top and at the bottom. And if you don't, then when the sun shines on it and heats it up, it, it will give you a wave across the different areas depending on how it was pulled tight. I like to do my tops in the summer. You can pull it out in the sun, you can get it nice and hot, and you can really move it. It's fairly cold today. It's probably 60 degrees here in my garage. So I'm going to have to heat it up with a heat gun. It's really difficult to do. You have to warm it and warm it and warm it and then hurry and staple it. And not warm it too much because you can distort the plastic. Working as quickly as possible, I can get that pulled out nice and smooth and then hurry and staple it down. Feels really good. I'm not real happy with this little buckle right here. I'm going to pull that these two out. I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. It should smooth that out. Looking good. I had to cut all the little holes for the bolts to go around. Now I'll get this slid into place and I'll bolt it in and then I'll be able to do the final measurements and hopefully staple the top of this window. This is the part where you where I end up doing it over and over and over until I have perfection. Whew, finally. Out from underneath there. Now we're looking perfect. Centered. Just enough room to pull it up over. So at this point, then we'll lift the front bow up, probably six inches or so. So we'll drop this back and I can staple this edge and I'll have to heat it and pull it and stretch it, but it's looking really good. Now that I've raised the front, this bow has moved back just enough so I can check the alignment and it's looking really good. Everything's aligned correctly. I've got a lot of droop. I'm sure I'm going to end up having to pull it side to side. It's usually what happens. But it's looking really good. I'll start from the middle and get out my heat gun and just kind of warm everything up and then move out.
We cut some pretty good tension side to side, warmed the whole area up as much as I could. Now I'll warm it all again and then I'll put the top down and latch it and that should pull all the tension on the pads as well as the back window. And <laughs> if all goes as planned, everything should tighten right up. I'm sure I'm gonna have to, to adjust the sides of these. I always end up having to adjust them, but we'll see. Now, just like I suspected, <laughs> I've got a real bad low spot here, which is pretty common. I have to go back underneath and pull it. But once I get everything stretched out side to side, it looks like I'll be finer across the top. Now the pads are not real tight, but once I get this droop out of both sides, it's right at the pads, it's going to really pull these pads tight. But before I get to that point, I need to staple and really finish off the pads. But Otherwise, there's a pretty good chance I'll just pop the staples out on that front bow since I only have two or three staples on each one of those. But as, as nice as this is looking, I'll go ahead and finish stapling this area. And then I'll have to pull it out and pull these two areas down, probably about a quarter of an inch around that bottom piece. Looking good. So what I did is I marked on here my estimate of how far it needs to be pulled down around. So basically what I need to do is remove all of the staples from the center out and then I need to pull this area down 5 sixteenths to 3 eighths. I'll probably start at about 5 sixteenths. I don't think quarter will quite be enough and then just bring it around to this area. I don't think I need to bring this down a whole lot, but an eighth of an inch is probably a good place to start. So this is one of those where it's just trial and error. Um, as long as you don't go too far and cut these holes where you end up with a hole up on the top of that brace. So it's good to, to start where I did, have it a little bit loose and then just slowly tighten it up. I'll start with marking this area since this is where the chop works the best. And now I can see exactly how much I need to move it. I removed all the staples. Now I can use those two marks, pull that down, restaple it. It'd be nice if I could just do a few staples, just kind of random. But there's so much pressure, it just, it'll just it either rip the material or pull the staple out. So you have to put in quite a few staples in order to test each time you remove it and put it back on. And then you have to recut the holes each time as well. But at this point, now that I know I'm safe to trim all this off, I can trim it and get it out of the way. It's stiff when it's cold. I'm gonna have to heat it up. I can tell from my staples that were removed. I am moving at about three eighths of an inch. Good to check. Make sure I don't take it too far and end up doing some damage. I'm going to start with just changing one side at a time. So I'll change this side and I'll trim this back a little bit because it's kind of hard to work with and down that well. 
and then if I have this side adjusted, then I'll do the same thing to that side. But if I need to make more changes, then I don't have to keep going back and forth and changing both sides. Now I need to go and recut these holes. And I just use a razor blade for those. You have to be really careful not to go too high. There's 17 bolts that go around this back well and you have to start in the middle and go across there's just no other way if you try to start from this end you can't get anything to line up so you literally have to go almost completely tightened down and work your way around I'm close I still got a ways to go that 3 8 wasn't quite enough uh, I moved this down an eighth of an inch and I'm, I'm super tight along here so I feel good about that now it's just a matter of once I get this pulling I'm gonna have everything pull back I don't need to come down anymore here it's just back uh, I'm good in the center so I mean, just that whole area probably another quarter of an inch takes about a half an hour to, to take that well in and out each time so it's a pretty labor-intensive project I'm really close this time uh, I, I've got a little bit I'd like to pull back right here so I, I think I'll loosen up this whole top bow and bring that top bow out towards the front about an eighth of an inch I'm probably okay right in this area but I'm getting a little bit of drooping in the middle. So I definitely want to lift that a little bit in the middle as well as I'll pull this backwards to the back bumper. That area is drooping a little bit too. But this side has got really good tight panel. But the other side This side, it doesn't look that bad, but it has a, a, a major droop right here. So I'd probably bring this up a half inch or more to tighten that up. But uh, right along this area looks fairly good too. So I'll probably release a little pressure here, but bring it up a little bit more here. I think I'm getting really close. I have to take this back bow out again anyways to put the top on. So I'll make some minor adjustments right along here, right along there, and right along the top. And we're getting really close to getting this back window done. I double checked the dimension down the middle of that back window and I have crawled about a quarter of an inch back this bow has it, it's it's coming this way a quarter of an inch too far so rather than loosening things back up I'm just going to loosen up this panel and I'm going to bring this forward a quarter of an inch and then that should tighten up the back window if it's too much if it's too tight then I will need to relieve it a little bit, but I only need to relieve it just right here in this corner. Uh, the center of the window, I either need to bring that back or I could bring this area forward. But I think once I pull these pads, and these are really good quality vinyl pads, so I think they'll take a lot of stress. And I have the heater on in the car, so that'll heat this back window up enough that I think I can stretch that window with these pads and get everything where it needs to be. If not, I'll make some adjustments when I pull it out to put the top on. So I went ahead and loosened the pad up and I took all the staples out. The front here, I marked it with chalk 
and I moved it forward about three-eighths of an inch on both sides. So this is where I have to be really careful because this is where you can start to stress things and start ripping staples out. So I'll lower this down gently and then I can watch to see where the stress points are, if any, before I really start cranking down the pressure. Well, it's looking really good. But before I latch these down, I'm going to get it really warm inside the car. So I'll leave the heater on, close the doors, put a cover on it, really warm up this back window, and then I'll clap it down. It's not real warm in there, but it's, it's getting fairly warm, and the back window's not really cold to the touch. Now let's try it out. Hopefully, I don't stress it out too much. Definitely pull it too far for the latch. The latch won't grab. There we go. Dude, that looks good. Very nice. I still have a little bit of sagging here in the middle. Let's check that center bow now. Surprisingly, <laughs> it only pulled that about an eighth of an inch. up both of these corners and then I won't need to loosen up the middle and that should take this little bit of a low spot here out and a little low spot here out just by relieving the pressure on these and then take some of the stress off of these top pads so it's not so hard to latch it's pretty difficult to get those latches to, to catch before you can close it But it looks like this is where it needs to be. So I can tighten that down. And I think this is good now too. I'm getting close. Now well, this side's done. This side is so close, but I relieved it just a little too much. And now it's got a little spot. So, <laughs> can't have that. So one more time, and when I pull this, it'll take this these wrinkles out too. Wow, I finally have back window perfection. Now I can start putting on the top. Well, thank you for watching this uh, little segmented series of three videos for uh, the convertible top of the this '69 Camaro convertible. Appreciate you watching. Uh, I tried to squeeze in as much detail as I could. I hope the uh, the guy that wants to do this project can get enough information from these. I hope they enjoy it. And if you wanted to just see how it's done and skimmed over it, I really appreciate you watching. Give me a like. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave me a comment. Love to hear from you. Thanks again. Goodbye for now.